Today I just thought we'd take a look at the DM18RL. It's a M18 adapter that'll work uh, with Ryobi tool. So my biggest collection of cordless tool happens to be Milwaukee and Ryobi. And my Ryobi batteries are getting um, a lot older, which if you follow my channel at all, you know that I have repaired several packs and chargers lately for the Ryobis. So I thought it would be a, a really good idea to, to have an adapter that will work. As my Ryobi tools are getting older and the battery packs, if you buy a high quality pack, the battery packs aren't a whole lot cheaper than going ahead and getting the Milwaukee if you get them on sale. So even though it's not quite as compact, it's actually a pretty good idea. We also have USB uh, output 5 volts at 2.1 amps. So I just thought we'd take a look at it. Um, of course, it's going to be a little bit bulky on the extended capacity packs, but on the small capacity packs, it really, it really isn't that bulky. Here's a little bit of the paperwork if um, you're interested in it. So first check before putting in a tool. Just want to read across the terminals. We're getting our 20 volts. I have a USB-C cable here from my Google Pixel. It does show charging. 79%. I'm just going to leave it 10 minutes and I'll come back and see what the levels come up to. So back about 10 minutes later and we have got to 89% so over a 10% gain. The actual charging part of the adapter seems to work really well. So just doing a quick check here in milliamps with the pack hooked up going across just a Fluke 87. We show about 170 microamps showing about 166 microamps at the moment. We plug up this little USB meter. Show it go to about two milliamps. So just be aware, even though it's a slow drain, you do have about 160, 170 microamps pulling on your battery. If you did leave this adapter uh, connected to the battery pack. So even though 166 microamps is being pulled off of the battery pack, a quick calculation at a 27 watt hour battery such as this one which is a small uh, the small m18 battery pack as far as capacity goes so at 20 volts we got about 0 0.00332 watts had to take this pack approximately 8133 hours or almost a year 339 days to discharge so while this won't hurt to be hooked up for a little while um, we see that you know roughly Roughly within a year, it, it actually, uh, or less than a year, it will pull the battery down. So you definitely don't want to just leave it and forget about it, hooked in your battery pack for sure. So I've been a fan for years of, of different adapters. I used to make my own. This is one in particular, for example, years ago, I got my first Ryobi 40 volt stuff and the edger actually worked pretty well. It was just the batteries in this 40 volt stuff, at least the first generation. I hadn't had them in a while, but they would not hold up. And for me, the answer after replacing the packs, replacing the cells, I ended up finding these plates for my Makita tools that I had at the time. And I was able to take these plates and put two of the 20 volt or 18 volt packs in series to get in my 40 volts. And, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and actually it worked very well. One thing that was kind of dodgy is I had to I had to put a, a strap. I just got it off this flashlight, but this strap to kind of keep the batteries in place. I just used the bottom plate off of the original Ryobi 40 volt and just soldered in the connections. Used tape and uh, basically it was a piece of rubber like large heat shrink rubber protection there to protect the batteries and just connected them in series to give them my 40 volts. And obviously I did this as a temporary measure, but believe it or not, the Makita batteries work so well in series that I was able to use this for several seasons before I waited to the Ego uh, 56 volt edger come out and I purchased it, which has been great. But this actually did get me by for like I say, several seasons. So adapters can really be handy, get you out of a bind. So now I just wanted to go ahead and test a few Ryobi items.
So the only item I got that it's obvious that the height will make a little bit of a difference, and it's not a big deal, is this inflator. We can see it sticks out just a tad more, but it's still stable. Of course, going with a larger M18 battery. Just gonna make that a little more noticeable, but still not a big deal. So I had zero problems testing the tools that all seem to work fine. But one thing I do wanna go back to the bench and look at just a little bit is um, just how much play is in the latch and then slide. It's got a little bit more play than I thought it would. Let's take a closer look. So one thing I wanted to look at was the play and just the looseness of the fit. Even though it does latch, When you actually hold the spring catches in, I want you to look at that. That's a little bit concerning, even though I had no issues with any tool I hooked up to and tried to use, I'll, I'll give it that credit. But you can tell this case is made, at least on some level, it's made to fit several different types of packs, several different configurations and several different manufacturers. But what I've done, is I've taken a Sharpie, hopefully this shows up on camera, and I went cross direction, and I blackened out the tip here, if you can see that, because it don't look like the blades are actually engaging into the contact points of the battery terminals very well. So I'm just gonna go back and forth several times with it. And you can see, we barely have some scratch marks on the very tip. Matter of fact, that's actually about where the taper stops. It's just the indicator right, right there. We see a scratch mark that didn't go, but maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Same on this side. You can barely see where it rubbed the, the Sharpie off because it's actually barely making contact. I'm very disappointed to see that. However, I'm actually gonna take it apart. I'm gonna try to modify it where it makes better contact. So it says most batteries are DeWalt and replacement batteries for most batteries are Milwaukee. But might actually get the walk pack and see before I modify it and test it that way too, so we'll know if it's any better uh, with a the walk pack. So Torx bit T10. We got one on top and four on the bottom. Nothing but diodes on the back. So we see our post go up to the Milwaukee, just come straight from the blade terminals, plus or minus. Nothing special there. We also feed over to the USB with a little DC to DC converter. Now at first thought, I, I wasn't the happiest about the size of this wire, but I do see it says uh, 200C rated 300 volts, so FT1. That's actually um, gonna be a higher temperature wire, so it's actually rated, it's rated for a lot more than it, it does seem. So I am gonna have to extend these blades, but I'm gonna put it back together as is until I can uh, test it out on a DeWalt pack.
long one goes on the top. This one here just show up a little better on camera, I hope. We do see we have some issues here that I did not catch while I was testing the tools. I know it's hard, hard to see. I'm actually not touching the spring latch at all. It's latched, but I can pull it back enough. It's got that much movement in it. That's not good. So putting pressure down, even though it's latched in there, We do actually lose our connection. It's right on the verge of making. It's actually right in, right into the start of the uh, connector. It looks like. So back now, I have a Dewalt, the 20 volt max, and we do see the reason the design in the housing had the clip. It does make a better connection with the Dewalt. So I believe this was actually designed for the actual DeWalt pack. I didn't know it when I bought it because it it actually had me walk in the description. So if you're buying this for the DeWalt pack, it seems to be uh, a lot better fit. It locks in, there's no moving. You would actually have to back it way past the latch all the way to right there. So that's a good 3 8 to a half inch that it's actually uh, going forward and latching. I'll put a, a real quick load check on here at the one amp test mode. We're almost dead on. There's a two amp current draw or the load the load uh, that would be two amps at exactly five volts. So we drop down just a little. So this pack does very well with the tested tools to save video time. I just done it off camera, but of course, getting the 20 volts to here, it runs the tools just as well as the Milwaukee did and, and probably will uh, do better in the future due to it not being a loose connection there. We see how well and rigid it fits here compared to the, the Milwaukee pack for sure. And we also see um, that it got a lot further on the connections. We can see it slid on up probably a good quarter of an inch or so. We see it, we see almost all the black mark that I put on there. We saw scratches. Hopefully it showed up on camera. It does show uh, a big difference. So well pleased with the performance it did for the DeWalt and actually pretty handy. So typically when I do a review on something it's because I'm interested in it or I like it so I buy it personally. Only a couple things have I ever had sent to me and I always say in the video that they were sent to me to review. But I still um, always treat it as honest as I would if I bought it. But nonetheless, this is one of those items that I just thought was interesting and bought it and wanted to see how it done and I uh, thought other people might be interested in it. And typically because this did not do as well as I had expected, I, I probably just wouldn't have done a review. I don't really like to do negative reviews. I just like to be positive about things that I like. Um, but this one rode the fence so hard and it done, it done so well with the DeWalt that I decided to do the video on it. Um, you know, as far as pros and cons, I mean, pros, we got the cost, the versatility, the USB charging, charging that's a really neat feature added in. And, um, and even though it just barely gets by with the Milwaukee, and I will have to modify it because Milwaukee is what I bought it for. But on the other hand, for the DeWalt, that actually works very well. It was a well-designed piece and it fits tight, fits good. It was a well-designed looking inside of it. It fits my um, Ryobi tools very, very well. 
So overall, I'm personally impressed with it. Um, and I think it's definitely worth the price point below, I think 1850 is what this item cost on eBay. Um, I think they range somewhere under 20 bucks typically. So this is actually the offer that I made and um, this seller actually accepted it. So I feel like anywhere around the, the 15 to 20 dollar price point, I think it's definitely worth it. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.